Hidden in the heart of Wiltshire, alongside the ancient Ridgeway track, lies the destroyed and almost forgotten site of the sanctuary where an ancient stone circle once stood. Part of the wider Avery stone circle and megalithic complex, nothing remains of the sanctuary apart from modern concrete markers, both rectangular and circular, denoting the positions where the mighty stones and wooden posts once stood at this ancient megalithic site, which dates back over four and a half thousand years ago into the Neolithic era. Hello, my name's Elliot and welcome to Exploring Ancient History. We're here today at the Sanctuary, an ancient Neolithic site that has been long since destroyed, but we can still see the remnants of the site that are marked by modern concrete posts. Now, from the ground, this site is overwhelmingly uninspiring. The stones are no longer here, the timber posts have long since rotted, and we are right beside the busy A4 here in the heart of Wiltshire. Now, to really understand this site, you must take to the air and get a good impression of how it looked back in the Neolithic era. Now, this site wasn't always destroyed, um, and it remained almost intact until around 1720, um, when the late antiquitarian William Stukeley attended and remarked about the temple on Overton Hill, the hill where we now stand. Not only did William Stukeley uh, visit the sanctuary here on Overton Hill, he also visited the entirety of the Avery Monument and made a drawing in the 1720s of the site in its entirety. Now, granted, in 1720, the stones of the avenue were not fully complete, but were in a much better state than they are today. So let's get up in the air, let's have a look. There's uh, complex star alignments here that really show the complexity and the ingenuity of this site and of the people who built it. So here we are on the west side of the sanctuary and you can see the southerly side of the avenue that leads in from Avery. Now here marks an alignment and as you can see in the background you have Silbury Hill. Behind that you have Folly Hill and the Longstone Cove. Um, also there is Beckhampton Longbarrow. But not only does this uh, position here have an alignment to other Neolithic monuments built by the people here at Avery in the Neolithic era, there also is a cosmological alignment happening here, um, something known as the crossing of the ecliptic to the Milky Way. Uh, this is where, um, at this time, the Milky Way would have leveled on the horizon 360 degrees around the sanctuary, and as observed on this line of sight, later marked by Silbury Hill, you would have seen the ecliptic crossing the Milky Way in the constellation of Gemini. Now, it's also the position where Alnath, um, the right horn of the bull, constellation Taurus would have set um, in this period as well. Now here we have a northwesterly alignment. You have the outer ring of stones going around this way and you have these two outlying stones here. Now unfortunately there is a bush that is blocking the view so we're going to walk around the other side and we can make sense of the alignment but from here, you would have seen the most northwesterly setting of the, of the moon. You would also have the setting of Capella. Capella is the sixth brightest star in the sky. Here, now off of alignment due to the bushes that we can see on the right, uh, stepping over to our left several paces, we can in fact see the notch where Capella would have set and the northwesterly most moon set would have been visible on that alignment. This alignment is of the utmost importance as it is where the site of Avery now stands and where the avenue leading from the sanctuary joins on to Avery. So here, looking out northeast from the heart of the sanctuary, there would have been an outlying stone just to the left of the current marker now this stone would have heralded the rising of Alnath, the right horn star of Taurus, as it rose um, poetically across the landscape. Now unfortunately, because of the bushes there, we can no longer see the exact alignment. 
the alignments on both the northeast and northwest sides of the sanctuary to the right horn star of Taurus, Alnath, are of particular importance, as can be observed when we take the drawing astutely comprised of the Abri site and turn it on its head. Here you can see how it could have been intended to look like the horns of a bull by the builders of the Abri complex. Now here, viewing south from the heart of the sanctuary, around two and a half thousand BCE, the Neolithic sky watchers um, here at the sanctuary, part of the wider Avery megalithic complex, would have observed the Southern Cross, the constellation Crux, which would have risen above First Hill and then set directly due south of the sanctuary. Now, the Neolithic people here at Avery and as viewing this from the sanctuary would have had a complex relationship with the constellation of Crux. At that time, it was starting to no longer be visible from this latitude, although it had been for the last 8,000 years. Crux would have been used by the Neolithic people of Avery's ancestors as they navigated um, north and south, using Cygnus in the north and Crux in the south to navigate um, deep, deep in our antiquity. While little is known about the people who lived, built and worshipped at the sanctuary and the wider Avery monument, what is certain is that they held this landscape and the heavens above sacred and wished to immortalise the night sky in stone, aligning their temples and monuments with the celestial bodies and movements of the heavens above. The West Kennet Avenue led out from the sanctuary, trailing several kilometres past Silbury Hill and along the base of Waden Hill, leading into the Avery Henge itself. We often look at history through the lens of understanding that we are the most advanced humanity has ever been. However, the Neolithic sky watchers and monument builders of Avery live far more in tune with the cycles of time, the seasons, the celestial bodies, and indeed with nature itself. I would wager that they were the enlightened ones, where we are, spiritually speaking, blindfolded, fumbling in the dark, always seeking connection and belonging, lost and bewildered in never-changing world and cosmos. In stark contrast, the people who built the sanctuary, Avebury, and the wealth of monuments, temples, and barrows in this land knew exactly who they were and how they fit in with the ever-changing sky above. So much so that even today, they are still showing us the way.